بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صلى الله عليك يا رسول الله وعلى أهل بيتك المظلومين صلى الله عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم All of us together السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته صلوات We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this year the year of the reappearance of our beloved Imam Mahdi Allah ta'ala Faraj al-Sharif with the blessing of another loud salawat. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst his companions and his sincere soldiers with the blessing of another loud salawat. قال الله الحكيم في محكم كتاب الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما المؤمنون إخوة فأصلحوا بين أخويكم واتقوا الله لعلكم ترحمون صدق الله العلي العظيم Brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته if I may ask the brothers to please move forward, inshallah, because we have more people coming and then they will be uh, disturbed. So please, just yes, with another loud salawat, please move forward. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajjil farajahum wa ala The following statement by Imam Hussein alayhi salam, when he wrote it to his brother, Muhammad ibn al Hanafiya, we've heard about it every year in Muharram. One night, two nights, or three nights, we've heard speakers talking about this hadith. Majority, if not all of us, we have memorized it. And we know the segments of this narration and the importance of it, and summarizes the mission of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. Tonight, discussion is based on this hadith but from a perspective that probably we have not thought about it and if we have heard about it good it's another reminder if not it will be inshallah a new discussion we know and we've heard and when I start reading it again majority of us if not all of us have memorized it where Imam said أريد أن أمر بالمعروف وأنهى عن المنكر وأسير بسيرة جدي وأبي. We want to focus on one of the segments of this hadith and that is إصلاح. To reform. To bring change. To change a bad habit to a new habit. To change bad demeanor and characteristics to a new characteristics. Typically, when we talked about Islah and we've heard about Islah, we think of a political change. That Imam Hussein came to bring a new political change to people's behavior and politics mostly. Rather, some forget that this Islah starts from each and every one of us as an individual basis. 
There was a person, it's a fiction, but it's a really beautiful story. One day, when he realized himself, he wanted to change the whole world because he saw how much chaos is in, is in this world. He started working and working and working years and years and years and decades. He wasn't able to change. He said, okay, how about I make this smaller? I focus on my own continent. Years and years and years and years, no change. How about I start working on my own country? Years and years and years and years, no change. How about my city? Years and years and years, no change. How about my tribe? Years and years and years, no change. My family, same thing, no change. Well, let me start changing myself. Too late. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi. Raja'un. Time was finished. The change starts with me. Islah should start with me. I always like and think and have in my mind that I have to do islah of other people. Islah of other people starts with islah of myself first. As many parents as they come to me and they ask me how can we do islah of our children? How can we discipline them? How can we teach them? I said islah starts with you as a husband and wife and parents. That's where the islah begins. I think by me telling them to become good, they will become good. No, I show them how good is and they become good. I don't have to tell them anything. I told them, a father who was sitting with me on the day of Ashura in JCC when we were eating niyaz, I told him, unfortunately, this is very sad news that I have for all of us. Our children, they don't hear us. They see us. Typically, parents want to educate and teach their kids through verbal, telling them, do, don't, sit, don't sit. Say, don't say. Why did you do this? Why didn't you do this? And all the verbal. No, they don't hear us. Allah made them in a way that they don't hear. Rather, they see. So that requires what? For me to do aslah of myself. The more I focus on my aslah, they see that I am going through this jihad on a daily basis against myself, against my ego, against my temper and my desire. They see this jihad. They learn this and they go through this jihad and they do aslah nafs. They do self-reform. So this aslah, tonight's talk is about aslah. What does it need to be aslah in us? And it doesn't finish. It's not that I became, I did aslah, I fixed something and it stays like this. No, it needs aslah tomorrow, the after tomorrow. It's not like within the house we can say, okay, we never do it in the physical. You know, I did take shower today. I did aslah. I had fasad on me as far as evil, dirtiness. It was on me. I washed myself today. Tomorrow I don't have to wash myself. Anybody thinks about it that way? Never. Tomorrow I wash myself again. The after tomorrow I do it. Every day I wash myself. We clean our houses. Vacuum, cleaning, everything. Do we say khalas? I do it once a year. Do we? Imagine that if it was once a year. Imagine if it was once a week. The house will be a mess. We do aslah in the house on a daily basis. Physical aslah every day. Appearance aslah every day. But when it comes with my internal, no. I think that I did it once, khalas. I'm good. I don't need to go back and think about it. By a show of hand, how many people have heard about this individual called Abdul Azim Al Hassani? One or two people. He's buried in Tehran. Hadith says the one who visits Abdul Azim Al Hassani gets the reward of Ziyar of Abu Abdullah Al Hussein. He's a very great ind individual. He's Sayyid, son, grandsons of Abdul Azim Al Hassani from the son of Imam Hassan Al Mushtaba. He comes to the Imam of his time. Imam al Hadi, if I'm not mistaken. He's a Sayyid, Aqeedah right, grandson of the Imam. He said, Imam, I came to you, I want to present you my Aqeedah. 
I want to tell you what I believe. You see my belief. See if it's right or wrong. How many of us we are willing to do that? Not telling other people how, how many of us we're willing to sit and think, okay, this is my aqidah. This is my aqidah about Allah. This is my aqidah about Tawheed, about Usul al-Deen, Nabuwa, Imama, so on and so forth. How many of us are willing even to just sit with ourselves and rethink about our own aqidah? That's the first place that we have to start. With our aqidah needs reform. Our aqidah needs islah. I hear something from right, I hear something from left, I see a reel, I hear a story, I see an event, I get tested, my aqidah becomes shaky. That requires what? Every day I need to do islah of my aqidah. I read a book, I see a movie. Aqidah has changed. Again and again and again. It's not that, okay, that aqid that I had at the beginning of my life when I became baligh, and this is usul al-deen, and I was taught in Saturday school, Sunday school, madrasa, teacher, sheikh, majlis, that stays with me today. No, our aqidah will be tested. Allah says, you think that you are a believer, and you say that you are a believer, and you will not be tested? We tested the people before you, and we will definitely, surely, verily, we will test you. So every day, let me present my aqidah to Book of Allah and Hadith of Ahl Bayt. As far as Usul al-Deen, Tawheed. People, I had a person asked me today. Uh, she said that I'm about to give lecture. What should be the topic? I said, first, you need to go to the community and you need to diagnose the community. See what is the need of that community. Do they have a problem in Tawheed? We have to focus on Tawheed. They have, profit, they have problems. I've seen people who have strong belief in Tawheed, but their adala, they're missing it. They have questions about Allah's justice. If people have asked me, if Allah, believers attending majalis, if Allah is just, why do we see this much oppression? If Allah is just, why do we see this many people dying out of hunger in Africa? If Allah is just, so they have problem with justice of Allah. It's okay to have these questions. No problem asking questions, but we should not leave these questions and stay in our mind without an answer. Right away, we have to find an answer for it. Because shaitan comes to you and I, shaitan takes our aqidah bite after bite. One doubt after another, one doubt after another. By the end of the year, you see, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un, aqidah is gone. So, action plan will be tonight. Let me see, do I have good strong aqidah in Allah, Tawheed, Na'adala, Justice of Allah, Prophethood, Infallibility of the Prophets, then Imama. Or I heard some people, some speaker, they said, okay, Imams are good people. Good people? Only? They went through whatever they threw. Scholars sit in these kind of members from our own community. Why are you making so big fuss about ziyar of Abu Abdullah al Hussein? Our own, our own community, we're not talking about non Shia, non Shia, non Muslim, it's okay, they're, they're sorry. Within our own community, video clips I reached, so called scholar talks about the ziyar of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. That is, you don't have to kill yourself on the ziyar. Seriously? So I hear this, I have questions, I have doubt. Okay, let me ask. Let me find out. I have to remove these doubts and misconceptions in my mind about my usul al deen That's the first reform, first aslah. If I came to these majalis, I participated in these majalis, Imam Hussein brought me his mission, his sacrifice. Indeed, I came out. I came and I did what I did. Sacrificing myself, my family, relatives, companions, everything I gave for the sake of Allah to do what? To do reform and islah. I have to see how much of this islah is affecting me. Am I on the path of islah or no? Ten nights of Muharram come, Alhamdulillah, I come, I said, Majal, let's go and I go back, I go back to my old routines. No. We will benefit from this majalis, no doubt. Every second sitting within the majalis of Abu Abdullah al-Hussein is reward, no doubt. Why can we get more? Why can we benefit more? First segment, aqidah, needs aslah, 
need reform on a daily basis. I need to polish my aqidah every day because my aqidah will be tested with one reels, one video, one line of books, one speaker's talk, one verse that I didn't understand, one hadith that I didn't understand. My aqidah becomes weaker and weaker and weaker. Number one. Number two, place that we need to focus our aslah on, our ahkam. When I was in Karbala, last year, Arba'in, inshallah, we go to the Arba'in this year, say inshallah. My aunt came, she is double my age. She said, you've studied books, you've studied all of this. I've done wudu, I want to do wudu in front of you. Can you make sure that I've done wudu, I'm doing it properly? Again, she's double my age. I said, yes, do it. She did it and I said, yes, you're doing it right. This is the way you have to do these are wajibah, these are mustahabat, you can add mustahabat if not. I go to a center, I go to the bathroom, I enter, a brother that I know of him, ma tami, mashallah, majar of Abdullah, he doesn't miss anything. I was doing wudu, I saw, he started doing wudu, wash his hand, alhamdulillah, wash his hand. Wash his right arm, wash his left arm, wash his face, wash his head, wash his feet. 25 years old. I was, as a brother, sorry, there's not the way we do wudu. Shaykh, so what should I do? I said, okay, let me at least teach you. What happened to my previous salah? I said, okay, go ask your marja taqlid about your previous salah. This is the way you do wudu right now. You wash your face first, right arm, left arm, you wipe, right, left. Ahkam of shara'iyya. Do I know it or not? How many people they come to me, they say, why wipes doesn't do Tahara, blood dro drops here on my hardwood floor. Sheikh, I will bring a wipe. It kills 99.99% .99 of the germs. No doubt. But still, it was one drop of blood. You brought a wipe which was wet. You did it. You missed it. the whole thing. You made more places, not just. There is a condition to purify it. It's in the book of our ulama, our maraja, in the book of Risala. In that case, second point that I need to do aslah after aqidah is my ahkam. In salah, all the wajibat of salah, it's mandatory for you and I to know every hukm of salah. Hajj, I don't know it. I have never been to hajj. I studied hajj when we studied in Hawza. That was one of the segments, couple of months. But until I go to hajj and I perform it, I don't know of it. By the time the time comes that I get the, the blessing to go to hajj, by that time, before that, I'm going to go read it. Right now, I don't need Hajj Fatawis and Ahkam. I don't need it. But Ahkam of Salah, Najasa, Tahara, Wudu, Ghusl. My father goes to a burial ceremony in one of the cities. After he did the burial ceremony, which is very important for us to participate and visit the grave cemeteries and graveyards more often, to wake up call, a 50 year old person comes to him and says, Sheikh, this was a wake-up call for me. Can you teach me Ghusl al 50 years old. Does it know of Ghusl al-Janaba? Aslah of our ahkam. You and I, do we know ahkam of khums? Do we know it? Or as many people as they told me, Shaykh khums is when you become rich, you pay khums. Who said so? You have five dollars left over with ahkam of khums? You have to pay one dollar khums. Even that one dollar must be khums. That's not your money. One fet of five dollars you have to pay. So some of the ahkam, we need to know of them as soon as possible. Action plan two. First was aqa'id. Second, ahkam. We go, we take the book of the side of our maraj al taqlid that we follow. May Allah give all of them long life. We take their books, ahkam of najasat, taharat, ghus, sisters on the side of the sisters, all of the ahkam. They must know. Wudu, salah. Homs, Amr bin Ma'roof, Nahi al Munkar. All the ahkam that we need to be knowing it on a daily basis, we are involved with it. That's number two. Number three, third place that we need to focus our aslah and reformation and learn it from Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam to say, Abu Abdullah, you brought me to this majalis, you invited me to your majalis. I want to appreciate your sacrifice. I want to appreciate your journey. 
I want to appreciate every blood, every drops of the blood of yours and Ali al Azgar and Ali al Akbar. I want to appreciate that. I want to bring Aslah into myself. How I do appreciate, I do Aslah in the third segment of my deen, and that is Akhlaq. My akhlaq needs a lot of reformation. Akhlaq, wife and husband. Why do I hear from some community member that the divorce rate is 50%? That is a disaster. It's a disaster. Why? What leads to divorce? Is it ahkam? You prayed on time, I didn't pray on time. Talaq. No. You did your ghost different than mine. Nobody talks, nobody, no wife and husband, they have dispute on ahkam. No. No wife and husband have dispute when it comes, typically the, all within one community, aqaids close, similar to one another. What brings dispute and gets to talaq is what? Akhlaq. Parents who have problems with their kids, what is the problem? Akhlaq. I sit next to a sister who she has gone through a divorce as a woman, as a sister, I sit next to her. She goes through, she's gone through divorce. Unfortunate. May Allah bless all of those people who go through divorce. They go through a tough time. We bless that, we pray that nobody goes through that. It's a disaster. May Allah give patience to both parties. If they were abusive, may Allah give them sabr and patience and may they go through fast recovery. The sister sits and she hears a person who's gone through a divorce. The other sister says, oh really? Your husband is like this? My husband was like this. Don't give him a chance. One minute. Divorce him right now. Is this the right thing? We're not talking about abuse. No. Physical abuse has no place in our families. No doubt. Nobody justifies any physical abuse. No, we had a difference of opinion. Oh, your difference of opinion? My husband, all of the husbands are like this. All men are like this. Same thing for the husbands. My wife is, I sit next to a brother, my wife is such and such. Your wife? My wife is the same thing. Is this akhlaq? It's not. This is against akhlaq. Part of akhlaq is sabr, patience. Again, I have to repeat it. I know I'm going to get some feedback. Oh, you allowed abuse. I'm not allowing abuse. No. I'm not justifying abuse. Abuse is not accepted at all, especially physical abuse. Maybe he said something verbally, he was upset. No, khalas, this is it. This is the end of it. He shouldn't do it. This is wrong. We have within our teachings, within Rasat al Hukuk, we talked about it in JCC, that as a husband, you must honor your wife. Fa'akrimha. No doubt. Honor her. But maybe, well, he came home. I'm not justifying it. Again, I'm not justifying it. He was upset from work and he went through a lot. He came home and he didn't have good akhlaq. He said something, maybe he raised his voice, which he shouldn't do. This is not part of ikram. This is not part of the right of the woman on her husband. No doubt. But be patient. Imams of Ahl al-Bayt have said through a hadith, if a woman, she tolerates the bad demeanor, okay, the normal bad demeanor, nothing abusive, if she is patient with that, Allah will give her the reward of Asiya. Your husband, I don't think, is oppressor like Fir'aun. I don't think. Maybe some, maybe I don't think so. From all the curses of divorce that I have gone through with different people from different community, akhlaq. It's needed. Gossip. Somebody gossip behind my back behind my back. First of all. It is wrong if somebody gossiped in front of you, gossiped me, for you to bring that gossip to me. It's wrong. Imam, somebody came to the Imam. He said, well, X and Y said something bad to you, about you. This is what he said. Imam said, why did you tell me? He shot an arrow and he fell on the ground. You picked that arrow and you brought it and you hit me with that arrow. Why you told me about this? Somebody comes tells me, oh, you know, such and such said something about you. Seriously? I'm going to sit on the member, I'm going to talk about them. Social media, hashtag, ex-sister, ex-brother, they're all this. I'm going to bring all of their family on the line. This is akhlaq? No. Dua makaram al-akhlaq. We read, Imam Zira Abidin salam teaches us that, Oh Allah, bless me to pay back 
the one who gossiped me with good nasiha. This is akhlaq. This is reformation of my akhlaq. How much do I need to focus on this? How much issues we can reduce? How many problems we can eradicate from our families, community member, society from reforming my akhlaq first? Oh, I know, there's a brother or sister, I have to go tell them about this. No, I have to tell myself about this. I don't have to tell anybody anything this moment right now. We'll talk about Islah Dhat al we'll talk the rest of the lectures. But first, it has to start with me, Islah and Nafs, daily basis. Again, I became, I did good, Alhamdulillah. I'm no longer getting angry at my, at my husband, my wife, my kids. Well, don't think that tomorrow you will be like that. Tomorrow, Shaitan will try to make you angry. Maybe your tolerance increased before you used to snap after five events, five incidents, you would snap and then you would say something. Well, you tried and you did jihad against your nafs. You t increase your tolerance from five bad words, five insults to ten. But shaitan would come and push you 11th, 12th, 15th. You increase it. Somebody comes to you to tell you something. You don't get, you don't snap at all. Shaitan will bring someone and they will say something about your parents. Right away, stories of the teachings of Ahl Bayt have to come into our life. Person comes first, tells Imam al Baqir, Ba, Alif, Qaf, Ra. Imam, somebody tells Imam al Baqir, You are Baqarah. Na'udhu Billah. You're a cow. Khalifatullah on earth. Imam told him, No, I'm Baqir. That's it. He saw he couldn't agitate the Imam. Imagine somebody comes and tells me like this. I am cow. Your whole generation are cow. Your whole tribes are cows. Your parents are cows. This is the way. Imam said, no, I'm Baqr. He said, your mom is black. Mother of the Imam. Imam said, if she has sin, may Allah forgive her sin. If you have sin, may Allah forgive your sin. That's it. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Khalas. Ya Ali. That's it. He wasn't able to say anything else. Or the story of Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba alayhi salam. Famous story. A person comes from the Sham. Imam Hassan is standing. All of his companions, they're standing. As soon as he saw Hassan, he said, you are Hassan? He said, yes. He started cursing Imam Hassan. Cursing. And cursing Amir al-Mu'mayn Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Kufr. People wanted to do something. Imam said, don't leave him. Imam stood. He talked, talk, 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 talk. Finished? What did Imam do? Imam fadhahika, not tabassama. Tabassama means you have a smile on. Imam laughed. Imam said, well, it seems that you're a stranger. If you're hungry, we will feed you. If you are thirsty, we'll give you water. If you don't have a shelter, we give you shelter. If you don't have clothes, you have, we'll give you clothes. Tell us any of your hajj and need, we will grant you. He starts crying, kiss the hand of the imam, feet of the imam, said, I'm sorry, I was brainwashed. I didn't know it was, this was you. I am right now, when I came from Sham, you were the most hated person. You and your father, you were the most hated people in my eyes. Right now, you and your father are the best people in my eyes. Three minutes akhlaq. Patience. So let me break the stories of the life of Ahl Bayt and put my demeanor, my characteristics, my akhlaq next to the akhlaq of Ahl Bayt. If it's not where it needs to be, I need aslah. Ya Ali. I said this hadith in JCC, believe it or not. The amount of people that they came and they were not happy about this, that how can this be? Maybe you are not saying it right, maybe, and how many people needed explanation? I was like, people are resisting, resisting the teachings of Ahl Bayt. I need to keep saying it until it becomes a norm. What is this hadith? An Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Allah. 
ayyama muslimain. Actually, this hadith is even stronger. The hadith that I mentioned there was about two believers. Mu'mineen. In here, ayyama muslimain. Two Muslims. Tahajara. They abandoned one another. Famakatha thalathan. Two Muslims. All of us here. All Muslims. Alhamdulillah. Nobody says Alhamdulillah in this community? Say Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yes, yeah, so I know you say Alhamdulillah. You're Muslim. Some people, they don't want to be Muslim. They don't say Alhamdulillah. Say Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Any two Muslims that they had a dispute, they abandoned one another. فَمَكَثَا ثَلَاثًا They were abandoning one another more than three days. لَا يَسْطَلِحَانْ They didn't bring islah amongst themselves. They didn't come back together. So, okay, خلاص. Whatever happened, happened. Forget it. Forgiveness. I'm sorry. Apologize. إِلَّا كَانَ خَارِجَيْنَ مِنَ الْإِسْلَامِ They have left Islam. If one of them dies in that condition, on the day of judgment, they will say, Rasulullah, you know, we are buddies, you know, I followed you, Islam. Rasulullah said, I don't see Islam in you. خَارِجَيْنَ مِنَ الْإِسْلَامِ They are no longer Muslims. وَلَمْ يَكُنْ بَيْنُهَمَا بُوَلَايَةٍ There is no guardianship amongst them. فَأَيُّهُمَا Any one of them being the wrongdoers, the oppressor or the oppressed. سَبَقْ إِلَى الْكَلَامِ أَخِي If you proceeded to talk to your Muslim brother who you abandoned him and he abandoned you, كَانَ السَّابِقَ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ يَوْمَ الْحِسَابِ He will be the first to go to heaven from these two. Why? Because you forgave the other person. This is aslah. This is akhlaq. This is what Allah and Ahl Bayt want from us. Do not increase the enmity. Why? Many brothers and many sisters came after that to me and they did one youth session about forgiveness. How can we forgive the oppressors? I said, of course, we were talking oppressor. We're not talking about Saddam as an oppressor. We're not talking about the enemies of Ahl Bayt to be oppressors. No. You said something to me, I raised my voice, I oppressed you. This kind of oppression we're talking about. You badmouth me, I badmouth you. This kind of oppression. Not okay, you killed me. Even killing, there is a place that, okay, my son, if you killed me, my son, there is a qasas, is there, no doubt. That he can take the revenge, he can ask the hakam of Shah to do the revenge of his father's blood. But Allah says, if you forgive, it's better. Forgiveness. Our akhlaq. Where else our akhlaq is needed? An aslah that you and I, after aslah of nafs in aqidah, aslah of nafs in ahkam, aslah of nafs in akhlaq, what do I need to do as a community member that we all are responsible? Qala Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. ألا أخبركم بأفضل من درجة الصيام والصلاة والصدقة؟ Do you want me to inform you about a merit, about a virtue that is one degree or a degree higher than fasting and praying and صدقة؟ How much importance we've heard about صلاة؟ So much. How much importance we have heard about fasting? Many rewards. About sadaqah, which the hadith says, when you give sadaqah, kiss your hand. Because you gave sadaqah to the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's how much reward sadaqah has. Okay? Rasulullah said, do you want me to tell you about an act that a degree high has reward, a degree higher than salah, sawm, and sadaqah? What is this? Rasulullah said, Islah dhat al You see two people, they have problems with, with another, two community members. They got into a dispute because of business, family issues. He said something, he said something, she said something, he said something. Back and forth, they got dispute between themselves. Wife and husband, parents and their children, two brothers, two sisters. We see there is a dispute between two people and they're upset with one another and they have abandoned one another. Rasulullah said, if you come in the middle to try to bring these two together, you get a reward a degree higher than salah and sadaqah and fasting. How I thought about this? 
these couple they have problems not my business it's them their fight their problem their issues why do I need to intervene well Habibi when they get into a problem that is a disease that came to their life they became sick when they were sick physically didn't we look after them when they were sick didn't we call Asalaamu Alaikum I pray for you that inshallah you get fast recovery when they have a dispute also that is a sickness that is an illness that is a disease I should call Asalaamu Alaikum anything I can do talk with the husband talk with the wife talk with the children try to bring them together because when they get separated God forbid when that happens that disease will start spreading throughout our community other people will start thinking well you see this happened they got divorced well that's opened the field for me again divorce is there halal no doubt abghad al halal the most hatred halal in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no doubt there is a time and place for it be it woman was abusive or man was abusive or both of them it didn't work out okay but is this the solution to every problem that the marital couples have? No. Two people were doing business together. They cannot do business anymore. Halas. They start fighting one another and everybody sits in the back and they clap. Fight, 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 fight. Action plan. If I know within my family members, my relatives, Close, al aqrabuna awla. First, within my own family and relatives, with my blood relatives. If there are people who have issues with one another, there is a dispute between them, let me see how I can bring it together. It's a responsibility. We cannot walk past by it carelessly. I don't care. If I can bring them together, the reward is very, very high. Another hadith from Imam al kadhim alayhi salam. Tuba. Ma. Ma. Salam. Tuba lil muslihin bayna al nas. Ulaik hum al muqarrabun yawm al qiyamah. Glad tidings, congratulations. Tuba. Shajarat al Tuba that is in heaven. For whom? For those who bring people together who try to remove disputes, who try to make people to be happy with one another, especially believers. They are, on the Day of Judgment, they are the, the closest one to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah's mercy. Is it easy? No. Very difficult. When you become in the middle of two people's dispute, a lot of headaches, a lot. You have to hear one side talk, 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 you get headache. You hear the other side talk, 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 you get headache. This, this is the reward. The reward is not going to come easy. Allah is going to hand you to the, okay, no. You have to hear him, hear him, hear her, both sides of the parties of this dispute. And then think, ask Allah, oh Allah, help me so I can be there to bring these two people together. When you do that, the reward will be, Ulaike humul muqarrabun. Imam, Imams of Ahl Bayt it's very, very difficult for them when they see two of their Shia. Until now, it was between believers, Mu'mineen, Nas. In here, look at the story. Imam really hates it and he angers him when he sees two of his Shia, they have dispute. How many times I've told the wife and husbands when they come to my office, I tell them, both of you are the children of Imam al Zaman. As a parent, as a parent, when you have your boys and girls, your sons and daughters, they fight one another. As a parent, it hurts you. That why you are having fight amongst yourself. Be nice. You are from one parent. Your blood is together. Why you have dispute? As a father, as a mother, when you go to sleep at night time and your sons or daughters and stuff, they had dispute and problems and quarrel between one another, you'll feel bad about it. You pray and you don't want this to happen. You want them to love one another, help one another, have each other's back. Imam of our time, I tell him, you are both the Imam Zaman's son and daughter. Imam is not happy. Because of Imam Zaman, forgive one another. Because of Imam Zaman, let go of this hatred and enmity of one another. 
Same thing with two Shia. This hadith is from our sixth Imam, Imam Sadr alayhi salam. <laughs> Imam gave money to Mufaddal, one of his companions. He said, go around. إِذَا رَأَيْتَ بَيْنَ اثْنَيْنَ مِنْ شِيَعَتَنَا Shia, the word Shia, very important. If you see there is a dispute between two of our Shia, and it was because of money, he gave money, he took money, back and forth, business, this much, percentage, 50%, 60, 40, 30, whatever it is. min mali. Give them from my wealth so they will be happy with one another. They won't have anger an enmity toward one another. I, as Imam al-Sadiq, I don't want to see my Shia having enmity and hatred and anger toward one another. Have I thought this? That if I see two people have problem with well, whatever it is, and I am capable of, verbally I can bring them together, good. If not, I said, okay, Imam al-Zaman, my rizq is from you. Never think that your rizq is from you. Allah gives the rizq to the hand of the Imams and Imam distribute. Imam did dua for us as we mentioned in JCC. Imam did dua, you and I, we get rizq, our money, our wealth. Everything that we have is from the hand of Imam Zaman, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say, Imam, I have the money. I will pay this money between you and Imam Zaman. You don't have to tell him anything. Here, you go to one brother, you tell him, okay, he gave it. He try asking for forgiveness. And you go to other person, he says, okay, that money has been taken care of. You bring two Shia together, how happy it will be Imam al-Zaman at the end of the day with you? How much blessing it will be in that rizq and ni'mah for you? Try to make Imam al-Zaman happy. Verbally, physically, mentally, dua, financially, however we can bring people together, that needs islah. When I start doing this, I can say that, Imam, I came to your majlis, I learned your mission, I'm upholding, glorifying, and venerating your blood. How? By bringing islah to myself and to my community. That's the way we appreciate the sacrifice. That's one of the ways that we appreciate the sacrifice of Abu Abdullah al -Husayn. And I finish with this last hadith. قال الصادق عليه السلام إمام سيد الكلام ثلاثة anything that comes out of our mouth is within these three categories there is no fourth صدق truth كذب lie وإصلاح بين الناس fixing between bringing people together Removing disputes between two people. Bringing, removing curls between them. So it's one of these three. Either I'm the, telling the truth, or I'm lying, or I'm fixing and removing difficulties and disputes between two people. How can we bring people together? How can we reform and bring, remove hatred and enmity between two people? He said, unfortunately, when I read this hadith, in some communities, inshallah, not in this community, say inshallah, is the complete opposite. Complete opposite. Imam says, Tasma'u min ar rajul kalaman yablaghu fatakhbuth nafsuhu. You hear A saying negative things about B. And it's all filled with hatred and enmity and anger. You hear this, you go to B. You say, سَمَعْتُ مِنْ A. I heard from A. قَالَ فِيكَ مِنَ الْخَيْرِ كَذَا وَكَذَا He said, all good about you. خِلَافَ مَا سَمَعْتُ مِنْ You will say the opposite of what you heard from A about B. Do we say it that way? Or maybe he said five words about me, five negative. The person was in the middle. He takes this five. Add good amount of spices. MashaAllah, Khoja and Hindi Pakistani people, they eat a lot of spices. Not with me at all. They add spices to this five, cook it nicely, make it a good meal, add 10, 15 more to it. They come to me and say, Sheikh, you know what he said? 
One, two, three, four, five, six, ten, fifteen, twenty, spice it up. Imam Sadiq says, no, you do the opposite. You heard five negative? This is called Islah Dayat al -bain. You don't let two people, two of Shia, two people to have enmity and hatred amongst, to, between one another. You hear five things, all negative, full of hate and enmity. You come to the next person, he says, everything was khair. He talks how much he misses you. He talks how, how good you are. This is how we keep people together. You see how Islah, and we can talk about this Islah, more and more. We can talk about Islah of Aqeedah more. How Aqeedah, which part of Aqeedah needs reform. We can talk nights and nights. Ten nights of Muharram. We can talk about this one word. Islah fi ummat jaddi, Rasulullah said. But how did they pay back Imam Hussein alayhi salam for this Islah? Did they accept this Islah? Did they welcome this Islah? No. Not only they did not accept this Islah, also they killed this Islah. Not only they didn't accept this reform, they wanted this reform not to get into them. They massacred Abu Abdullah al Hussein. They behead Abu Abdullah al Hussein. They cut waters from reaching the tent of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. Okay, you hate them, huh? you killed him. At least leave their, his family to bury him. As soon as we receive a phone call that the person from our community has passed away, we all come together to participate in the burial ceremony of that marhum or marhum. But, brothers and sisters, the body of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. On the plains of Karbala, three days. When Hamza was killed, Rasulullah came and he took his abaya and he covered Hamza. And he participated right away in the burial ceremony of Hamza. Rasulullah, where were you on the day of Ashura? When they left the body of your grandson Hussein on the plains of Karbala, three days, they didn't even cover him. Not only the cover, they snatched his clothes away from him. Three days he is under the sun and the scorching sun is on the body of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. After three days, Bani Asad came and they saw all these bodies. They wanted to come and help and start burying the bodies of Ashab because Omar ibn Sa'd, afternoon of Ashura, he commanded all of his companions, go and bury all of our soldiers and leave the camp of Hussein ibn Ali, leave. So they left all the bodies of the camp of Abu Abdullah Hussein. Nobody touched them except Hur that his body was taken away. But the body of Abu Abdullah Hussein was on the ground. Bani Asad wanted to bury, but there was no head to these bodies. They didn't know who is who, how to bury. <laughs> Suddenly they saw a person coming with a ride. They saw it was a mu'jizah of Imam Zain al-Abidin coming all the way from Kufa, coming all the way back. Imam came and he said, I will help. Imam Zainal Abidin helped and start helping and start preparing the bodies when he came to his bo the body of his father Abu Abdullah al Hussein. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. He came and how can he collect the body of his father? They cut him, they cut Abu Abdullah al Hussein into pieces. He couldn't bring his body together. He asked for a very, very old mat that was there and he started collecting the body of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. Then he went to the grave and he placed his father into the grave and started shedding tears. You know when we put a person in a grave, we put their face toward the qabla. But this body of Abu Abdullah al Hussein has no head to be facing the qabla. And it was all the tears of Imam Sajjad on the body of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. 
Then he came out. They started putting dirt on this body. And then he wrote with his hand on the sand, Hada Qabr al Hussein, Ibn Ali Ibn Abi Talib, Alladhi Qatalu Atshana. This is the grave of Hussein Ibn Ali Ibn Abi Talib, the one that they killed him while he was thirsty. Allah Lahnatullah Alal Kaum al Zalimin. وسيعلم الذين ظلموا أي منقلب ينقلبون والعاقبة للمتقين. Let us raise our hand. It's time of the job of du'a. Asking Allah subhanahu wa taala the most important du'a and that is to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam Mahdi عجل الله تعالى فرج الشريف. اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج. اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج. اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج together بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن everybody صلواتك Louder في هذا الساعة وفي كل ما شاء الله وليا وقائدا ودليلا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ماتم حسين